Interest rate parity is an application of the cost of carry model that enforces an equilibrium between two investment choices and makes us indifferent between translating a currency immediately at the spot rate or holding on to that base currency and translating at the end of the period with the forward contract. So I'll assume that the euro is the base currency and the US dollar is the quote currency. It's just a currency pair, nothing magic about that sequence. We could switch them. But if the euro is the base currency, then I think I'm fairly current here with a spot currency exchange rate of $1.16. Now the notation can be counterintuitive and by convention, although it is useful, by convention, the, the, the notation is we do the base currency first followed by the quote currency. So here, where the euro is the base, notationally it goes in front when we probably or we could omit the slash and then the euro, the US dollar, excuse me, as the quote currency goes second. So that's $1.16 US, US as the quote. Now, this can be counterintuitive because it's tempting to read this as a fraction, but as a fraction, it's actually the opposite of what it appears to be, which is to say what this means is it's 1.16 US dollars will purchase us one euro. Okay, so that's the quote convention, and we have a dollar 16 with euro as the base. Now, the Interest rate parity applies the cost of carry model to enforce an equality between two alternatives or an equilibrium. So that is to say, let's imagine that we are here at time zero and we start with 1000 units of the euro. And then we would have two investment choices. We could take our 1000 euros and immediately translate them into US dollars at the spot currency exchange rate of 1.16. Obviously that will get us 1,116 US dollars. So here we're immediately translating our euros into US dollars and then we let the US dollars compound at the US risk-free interest rate. I have that in yellow as an input, it's 3%. And so at the end of two years here, that's our horizon, also an input, we would have 1,231.73 US dollars. So this cell here is just compounding continuously, right? It's just taking the 1,160 US dollars that we start with and compounding continuously at 3% over two years. In the exponent, 3% times two, the number of years gives us this number of US dollars at the end of two years because we translated immediately at the spot currency exchange rate or at the currency spot exchange rate. Our other alternative here is if we start with 1000 euros is to simply leave the 1000 euros in the European account and let it grow at the European risk-free rate. Again, in yellow as an input assumption. So I had it at, I have it at 4%, I've rounded numbers. I think it runs a little higher, but this is just to illustrate. So the euros then would compound continuously. And at the end of two years, we would have 1,083.29 euros. And then we could translate them into dollars and you'll notice, so that's in green here because that's the key solution. This is the solution or application of the cost of carry. And it's solved for, you can see here, as 1.137, which is a forward contract, is the price of the forward contract or the forward exchange rate. So it's solved for because if we took the euros that we had at the end of two years and we exchange them per the forward contract, we would get back the dollars at this rate, at this price of 1.13. We, we're delivering euros in exchange for receiving dollars so that that's a straight multiplication here of the euros we have and the forward price, uh, the forward contract's price, which is an exchange rate. 
we would get back 1,231.73 US dollars. So that this 1.137 as a forward exchange rate is solved for in order to enforce an equality here between these two alternatives. So that's an equilibrium. And so I would remind you that this 1.13 is a forward price. So that means at time zero, we basically lock in the exchange rate at the end of two years. So what really is the variable that remains to be seen if they're realized are the interest rates and the interest rate differential. But the idea here with the interest rate parity is that if we're at time zero, this forward price that we can lock in today ought to enforce an equilibrium, which is to for us the indifference. We're in, we ought to be indifferent between, there ought to be no obvious arbitrage or quasi-arbitrage between, on the one hand, translate our euros immediately into US dollars, grow them at the US rate, or keep them in euros and translate at the end of the two-year period back into dollars. Interest rate parity says that we ought to be indifferent between these two alternatives. And so the solution here, this 1.13, is actually applying the same cost of carry model that I've been covering in this playlist, and that's why it's actually here. That's why I actually loaded it here, because it's a special case of the cost of carry model. You may recall our cost of carry model tells us that the theoretical futures price is the spot price, that's F sub zero, S sub zero, times the net cost of carry, which is E raised to, in the case of an investment commodity, we said it's the risk-free rate minus a dividend or income, denoted small Q, I followed John Hall's notation, over the maturity, right? So that's cost of carry for an investment commodity. And that is what's being applied here to solve for this forward price. That's what this is, a forward price. The only difference is, or in this specific instance, we just have to cope with the issue of the fact that we've got two interest rates. And so the first interest rate is the interest rate for the quote currency. That's my tip if you're studying for the exam. You want to the, it's the quote currency here that's used as the first interest rate. In our case, it's the US dollar. And we subtract the interest rate for the base currency. So that is analogous here, or that really is the Q or dividend, dividend yield in our cost of carry model. And in this case here, that's the European risk-free rate. And we're using two years. So you'll notice here in applying the interest rate parity, in applying the cost of carry model as, a, as an instance, as the, or I'm sorry, the interest rate parity as an instance of cost of carry model, the key insight here, this is hard to see as an R, the key insight here is that our dividend yield, for the dividend yield assumption, we use the risk-free rate for the base currency. And that is because, right, the Q represents a dividend yield or income paid by the commodity, which is a benefit of ownership, so it subtracts in the theoretical and the cost of carry model. Well, what's the commodity here? Well, the commodity, U.S. dollars is the quote currency. It's the money we're cash we're paying in exchange for one unit of the base currency, which is the euro. The euro is the commodity. The interest rate, the European interest rate, is analogous, is effectively the same thing as the dividend yield on the commodity. So for Q, we use the interest rate on, in this case, the base currency, which is the European interest rate. So it's an interest rate differential in the exponent. And you'll notice in our case here, we have a, we have a three minus 4% or a negative value in the exponent such that our, I'm going to take this, all of that out now, such that today's spot rate of 1.16 
is going down to 1.13. And so here's where the notation actually becomes uh, helpful, right? We start today with a spot rate of euro as the base, USD as the quote, quote 1.16. And if the European interest rate is higher than the US rate, then this interest rate parity, what it does is it implies in order to maintain equilibrium, a depreciation in the interest rate of the base currency here, the euro, right? So 1.16 goes to 1.13. And then the way that we can interpret this, right, is the value is going down. It's a depreciation in the base or here, whatever appears first. That's how I think of this, right? 1.16 went down to 1.13. It was a depreciation in whatever is listed is first here, the base currency, meaning this is an appreciation in the US dollar. So this is with the equilibrium. I can enjoy a higher interest rate in the, in, uh, the European interest rate is higher for me in this scenario than the US dollar. So all other things being equal, I'm getting a better rate in Euro, I would keep them in Euros. But that's offset or mitigated by, under this interest rate par parity, a depreciation in the Euro. Just as, for example, if the US interest rate was 5% or higher, now the US rate is more attractive, but the forward rate that enforces an equilibrium here, you can see now becomes 1.18 and it's higher than my spot rate. And so to maintain equilibrium, what is implied by this interest rate differential is an appreciation in the Euro and a depreciation in the US dollar. So that's the interest rate parity as an application of the cost of carry model. I hope that's helpful. If these videos are helpful, please subscribe to the channel and you'll get updated. Thanks.